Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about a pair of trade-offs in the receiver architecture. It is the trade-off between the channel select filter and the image rejection filter. If you want to know how the image rejection filter works, please check my previous video by clicking this link. So in order to understand this pair of trade-off, there is a concept we need to understand first. It is the fractional bandwidth in the bandpass filter. So let's say this is the frequency response of a bandpass filter. We can, um, there is a pair of relationship, the fractional bandwidth equals to the absolute bandwidth divided by FC, where I define FC is the center of the pass band. C stands for center. And uh, the absolute bandwidth, I, um, I use BW stands for bandwidth. So what this equation tells us is that given a particular topology of filter design, as a designer, you may be able to change the bandwidth. You may also be able to change the center frequency. However, the ratio of the bandwidth and the center frequency remains constant. And we call that constant the fractional bandwidth. I'm just gonna put that equation on the side. So, fractional bandwidth equals to the absolute bandwidth divided by the center frequency. Now let's consider the following scenario. Let's say this is my input signal and this is my LO. As you can see, the use for information omega input is symmetrical um, around the LO with regard to the image. So the distance between the input and the LO equals to the IF, which is exactly the same distance between the image and the LO. We know from the previous video that when um, before we mix the input with the LO, the input signal goes through the image rejection filter. I'm going to use the blue marker to highlight it. And uh, the image rejection filter is essentially a low pass filter that suppresses the image. So when we mix the two, this is the DC point and the, let's say this is the IF. The signal we got looks something like this. So as you can see, the image has been suppressed significantly while the input signal largely remains unchanged. So after the signal is mixed, we use a channel select filter to pick the relevant in-band information out of the noise. So let's say there is a spur right here, close to the useful information. And I'm gonna use the red marker representing the channel select filter. Yeah. 
So as you can see here, the, um, the channel select filter applied some suppression to the spur. However, the suppression is not complete. There's still a little bit remaining signal energy here. This is because the IF, which is, happens to be the center of the channel select filter, is relatively high. And based on this rule, that the fractional bandwidth of a given filter design remains constant. Since in this case, the IF, which is our center frequency, is high, um, that means the bandwidth is also quite, quite wide. So it's very difficult to design a very sharp, uh, highly, highly selective bandpath filter to completely suppress the spur. Now let's consider a different scenario. In a different scenario where similarly, this is our useful information and Unlike the first scenario, the image and the useful information, they're really close to each other. So similarly, when it goes through the image rejection filter, we have image rejection filter. Because the image and the signal, they're so close to each other, the filter um, partially suppress the image. However, the suppression is not as significant as compared to the first scenario. And, uh, after we mix the two. Unlike the first scenario where the IF is pretty far from DC, in this case, because they're so close to each other, the IF is small, which means that the IF after the mix is very close to the DC. And uh, this is what's remaining from the image. Here I'm exaggerating it a little bit. What this uh, notation just showed that the image has been partially suppressed. However, there's still a significant amount of energy remaining. So let's say similarly, there is a spur here, right next to the useful information. So in this scenario, it is very feasible to design a channel select filter that picks out the useful information exactly. Why? Because based on the fractional bandwidth rule that the ratio of the bandwidth and the center frequency remains the same. In this case, the center frequency IF is far smaller than the previous case. What that means is that we can really design this channel select filter to make the bandwidths really, really small. That is how we're able to completely filter out the uh, adjacent channel spurs. So the trade-off here is that if you choose your IF to be very large, then you get very good image rejection. However, you get poor channel selection. Conversely, if your IF is very small, your image rejection is not that great. However, you get very good channel selection. So the balance of the trade-off between the image rejection filter and the channel select filter lies in the choice of the IF frequency. Thank you.